G'day and hello beautiful people, it is Milwell here, hope you're having a fantastic day, afternoon, evening, night, no matter the time, wherever you are, hope life is treating you well. Let's crack on to it, episode 3 of Walker Wednesday, and Road to Survival has been all about Christmas Carol, no different to last week and probably the week before and whenever the event started, it's all been about trying to grind to get those gnomes so they can get Carol. Uh, you did get one of her in the calendar which is helpful so you at least I reckon should be getting her to one star. Uh, three stars I think personally you're probably going to have to actually be a paying player. I was gonna say pay to win but that sounds really wrong but you're gonna have to be someone that's spending money on this game still probably to get her through the three star. If I'm wrong someone let me know but I don't see you getting there other than if you're spending money or willing to spend money to get her. Two star for me is probably the maximum I'm going to get her to. I've got the one star already so two star is definitely the maximum with me. Um, I don't really like talking about characters and the current upgrading system when it comes to the mythics because you know we used to whinge back in the five star days which was so much simpler times to now about the power creep and how every premier recruit every week would be better than the previous one by like a, a really bad amount like from week in and week out that character would be so insanely better than the previous character that was released the week before and so forth and we talked about this power creep and how it was happening and then we had things like legendaries happen like epics were no longer the top dogs legendaries happen s classes happen then mythics happen and then it was one star mythic two star mythic now a three star mythic and they just keep creeping up in regards to the power gap and personally i can't see it as any other way at as in, it's greedy, it's pure greed. Uh, you know, you got to remember back in the five star days, all you had to do was get the character. Like if you did openings, you'd get certain premier recruits you couldn't get in free to play openings and so forth and events. And once you had that character, all you had to do was grind and get the gears to get that character up and have it to its maximum potential. Now it's different. You need at least five of that character to even get them to their maximum potential. Five. So when you're doing premier recruits openings with the bad statistics, they're still bad statistics like they previously were, you need to get five of that characters. The amount of openings you have to do to get five of those characters, if it's a premier recruit, beyond ridiculous. The amount of money you have to spend, beyond ridiculous. And if you're still spending money to this day trying to achieve that, I have no words for you, honestly. Um, Anyways, why I've been ranting through that, that is why I don't really talk so much about premier recruits and I'm not going to do character reviews, I'm not going to do anything like that because I, I honestly, I can't advertise someone spending money on this game or anymore, I really can't. Anyways, as you can see, I fell through the trap but it's a free to play trap of the three star Alice there. Which brings me to another issue of them changing how you actually obtain the mythics from the museum to then restricting the amount you have available to you for a certain amount of days and it's only a certain selection. I mean, yeah, it gives you new characters, but plenty of people could have had three stars characters that were in that museum right now and just spent up the gold medallions but like I said I try not to rant about it getting the lieutenants up as well basically this week it's just been farming for Carol and then doing a little bit of upgrades here and there I know I don't really post a lot on this game and I probably in the coming weeks with these episodes you actually I will start to talk a bit more about my frustrations and why I'm moving away from it what I was just talking about before with the mythics is one of the reasons let's jump into a game I'm absolutely loving right now and that is the walking dead survivors so upgraded the town hall as you can see pretty much my whole town here was max 13 that's how I upgrade my town I do not upgrade my town hall until every single building in my town 
is maxed out. The only building that should be inhibiting me upgrading things is my town hall. So as you can see here, everything's 13. The only thing that isn't 13 is one of my formation grounds. And the reason for that is because I can't get it to a higher level until I have my town hall at level 16. So like I was saying, the only thing that should be limiting me upgrading anything is my town hall. But that's just a personal preference. I'm sort of one of those things that like to get the maximum efficiency out of every level. So everything must be leveled up, just not grinding or smashing through my town hall levels to get certain things and not leveling up anything else. I want everything else to be, if not the same level, as high as it can be for what the town hall allows it. So we got it up to level 14. I'll do the exact same thing. I'll do the tedious thing of leveling up every building and making sure everything's 14 before I go. And then I move on to the town hall. Uh, but for now, let's go explore in the new areas. One of the most crucial things to do when you actually upgrade your town hall. Get that extra space, fight off those walkers. And then it's put down the new unlocks that you would have got so for 14 it was the gun shop exploration camp and the garage most excited for the garage finally i get a pair of wheels finally i get some sort of transport other than actually yeah other than horses well i guess it has horses in it which is sort of given it away but yeah and the hardest thing I guess for me when I upgrade my town hall is actually going through and find out where things are. As you can see, I said I tend to like organize things. I'm I know trust me, I know I'm to one side right now. There's a lot of open space, but I can't help it. I just want things close to each other and to be organized and just make it very accessible and I I have issues I don't know how it goes but it's one of the hardest things is like literally rearranging things when new things come in and trying to find a space near other things that doesn't make it look weird anyways as you can see with that everything was unlocked in a line with the ending of the, the chapter all the fog disappears and you're free to see again the grass is green and it's no longer white like the whole of this middle screen anyways let's move on the next thing I tend to upgrade I sort of had an order which I always follow after upgrading the town hall and it's that I upgrade first a farm and then my food storage so then I can upgrade my gate or wall and the reasoning for that is I want the extra durability the extra health the extra attack and the extra defense that it gives so if someone was to raid my town or attack my town then I've got that added advantage of at least my war has been leveled up straight away. And it also allows me to not worry about it later on when I want to upgrade my town hall. It's just already done. Next I move on to the houses. The reason why the houses are next in line is because I want the training group size and the training speed to increase. The reason why I do these before I do the actual training grounds is because the training grounds take a lot more time to do and they take a lot of resources. So if you're running a bit lower on resources, at least I can train those extra peoples. Or, yeah, do you call it people? Yeah, I guess. At least I can train those extra people within gathering those resources or whatever I'm missing and it also means it's cheaper to actually promote one of your fighters that's what I should call them fighters not people it's cheaper to promote one of your fighters than it is to train them so at least if I've got extra trained in say you know the tier 4 or the tier 5 when I go to upgrade them to the higher tier it's cheaper for me time wise to promote them rather than retrain them so that's why I tend to do the houses first and I haven't run into any issues doing it that way and I don't think you can really run into any issues but I just prefer it in that order and now I just go through the tedious tedious task of upgrading everything like I said it's the way I do it and will continue to do it I'm not going to just smash through those town halls but the most exciting part like I said at the beginning is the fact that I finally have a garage which means I can get some proper transport and when it comes to the carriage, which is typically the very first transport you're going to get, well, it's the very first one I get, 
you're going to get it within five grabs. I think I've had a couple of grabs, I'm not 100% sure, but I did get some more keys from the current Christmas event that's happening and I purchased something and I got some keys, I honestly can't remember. But anyways, I've got five keys. I'm going to go ahead and open it. I do fortunately get it on the first pull, so I technically could have just waited and did the free grab the next day and I would have got it but it wouldn't have made a difference either way whether I use these keys or not uh, in the future I will be doing it by tens just because I don't like opening single keys it was sort of annoying but what it allowed me was just I guess the extra time of upgrades and it allowed me to sleep more peacefully knowing that I had my horse and carriage I'm gonna be honest but I do end up upgrading these guys, I guess, can you say these guys? It's technically two horses, I guess, yeah. Uh, it could be girls, who knows. I ended up upgrading it to level 3, my horses and carriage. There you go, that's probably a better way to put it. So we'll just go through and do that. It's, it's good at, like, I didn't realise when I was first getting them that, oh, getting them's the easy part, it's upgrading them that's going to be the hard part. I've now learnt that, but at least I've got it to level 3, I guess. Um, so, you know, I'm doing okay in the upgrade department, we'll just finish it off. Haven't got the RV or the bus, I imagine that's going to be way, way down the line of me getting those. They're probably a much higher rarity to drop out with the grabs compared to the carriage. Everyone's running a carriage that I've seen, so they are definitely the easiest ones to get. Uh, the RV and the bus, I've only seen a couple and they're really high tier plays that have been playing this game a lot longer than what I have. I'm only like a month or so in, so I'm just playing catch up. The next thing that I didn't realise I'm learning things day by day with this game is how important your equipment is. Should have I known? Probably. When it comes to your forge area, it's something... I only opened it at level 12, so I've had it a couple of levels, I won't lie, I've had it a couple of levels, but I didn't realise how important these items were to your actual power rating. I gained over a million worth of power rating just from upgrading or forging stuff, I should say, just from forging stuff and then equipping it to my actual characters. I gained a lot of power and it wasn't only my combat characters which is what I was just crafting for but it was also my development characters which got I have I've got over a million power when it comes to my development characters alone I think I'm only at 600k or something 600,000k for my um combat team they're a bit harder to level up and I have less of them, so it makes sense that the power rating is low. This was from this morning. As you can see, my power rating has increased immensely from, what, 3.8 to 5.4. So I'm doing well. Let's move on to days after. Now, this episode, or oh, this update in this episode of this game is going to be very, very boring, to say the least. Now, welcome to Home Renovators 101 with Milmo. This is what's happening right now. Uh, so, as you probably saw from my experience with survivors and arranging towns and how sort of um, OCD, pedantic I can be with certain things, I was really letting this one go astray over here. I was, I really was. I was running a 10 by 10 building. Now, at the time of building this, I thought it was a fantastic idea of running 10 by 10. But then I noticed what happened with the doors. They're not even. So you need to run odds. And I want to run 13 by 9. <laughs> Literally. This is what this is all about. Running 13 by 9. Because I need my door to be right in the middle. And have even numbers beside it on both sides. So what I'm going to do is go across 3. As you just saw. We went across 3 and we're coming in 1. So... That's what we're doing and we're going to get the 13 by 9 and my doors finally are going to be right in the middle and looking gorgeous. For now, this whole stuff is very tedious. I'm not going to lie, upgrading on this game, I'm not sure how it does on without the app, but on the app it's a bit like finicky because you can click on things and spin it and they're not, it's just very touchy so I'm not a big, big fan of actually that. Like they're not bad, it's not a bad um, mechanism, the actual upgrade, and it's just a bit, you know, 
finicky for my liking but it works it's just yeah you have to sit here a while and do it as you just saw of course I built a wall where the doors meant to be but this is the grand plan of the whole thing is I wanted the door to be dead in the middle so then I had four well on the sides it will be four by four so it will be even and then on the fronts and the back it will be seven in the middle so it will be six by six on each side and it will be even the door will be dead in the middle now it's just a matter of moving everything inside back to the walls so it's literally open plan living so you can run all through the middle and then I have various stations from where things are crafted and where I hold certain things very organized um, that's unlike me I know why would I ever organize everything now this is what I'm like with all survivalist games anywhere where you can collect gather sort of build um, the amount of hours I sink into these sorts of games just arranging things it's it's bad habit I'm not saying I don't enjoy it but it's a bad habit that's all there is about it so for now with this one putting the door down we're moving this in one of the reasons to move it in was not only the door thing but also to get away from the car I was sick of running out the door and smacking straight into that car or having to turn like sharp instantly you know got to think about the knees you never know about the knees of these characters here now it was just uh, a bit weird having it all the way at the car I maybe could have went 7 by 13 but 13 by 9 just seemed the logical choice um just bring one in and then take it out three and it's a fairly good like it's a rectangle so it's a fairly good size eventually I will start putting walls on the inside and sectioning off the house so it's not so open planned living you know I've got me freaking campfires and everything still in there but for now it's just a matter of getting those doors in the right area so that I can sleep peacefully at night um that's what it's all about right now we'll put lovely windows a door look how good this is. it's looking like a house look the dog's so excited it's about to bite me if that's not exciting I don't know what is now the most tedious part of this whole thing it wasn't even building it it wasn't it's moving everything because in all those crates some of them are chock-a-block fill and I have to move every little thing and I can't always fit it all in my inventory so I'm constantly moving things and then putting things in and constantly moving and putting things in and collecting things and then putting things in so like I said pretty tedious um yeah let's leave it like that I don't need to sit the um, the amount of footage I had to actually edit out of here because I could decide where to put things. But here we are, the finished product. We've got everything moved out to the side so you can run free. We moved the campfires over. Still got all this corner of like my scraps, copper, chemicals, electronics, goods, clay. We've got this area which has wood. So we'll have both wood, wood planks. And then we've got stone in the other corner animal fat anything that's needed for crafting is over in that side weapon station finishing this off or coming close to the end now I just wanted to do a few upgrades because I wanted to finish out the chapter I believe it was day seven from memory I wanted to finish out this chapter so I had to upgrade my bonfire to seven and then upgrade some windows and walls which was just in time because I just finished my renovations best time to upgrade is once you finish your renovations you know or during your renovations who knows but the front looking all nice as it did I wanted to make it better so upgrade when it comes to upgrading walls you have to upgrade your floors first which makes sense yep um, that's that's logical I guess and it was just a matter of upgrading these walls look how nice that that's so inviting so inviting it also looks like it would withstand a, you know a barrage definitely no walkers getting in here do you know what could make it even better looking more t more leveling up the walls more do you call them tier two walls yeah tier two walls why not level two walls should just read what it said anyways we'll go ahead and collect this and go about finding this quest now 
when it comes to this quest which I'm about to do, it is way, way, way above my equipment level. I reckon you would need, you're going to need like tier or three star sort of weaponry and you're going to need range weaponry. This one's just a one star sort of, you get this with your daily login weaponry. Look, I can bend bullets, it's amazing. And whilst it gets me to the treasure, I did run into a bit of trouble. I didn't die, but I ran into a fair bit of trouble. Like, these things hit. I like to sit shit behind me. I don't know. Okay. So they definitely hit. I'm not killing fast enough. That's essentially the problem. Yes, I can take the damage to an extent, but when there's multiple higher level zombies like that, I can't withstand that much damage, like I can bring things to heal and so forth, but I need the weaponry to be killing them quicker so that I'm not taking on that much damage. And I just don't have it at the moment, so that's why I don't do these higher tier ones. I also don't have the axe to actually chop down these oak trees over here, so me farming this sort of area is just, it's not practical at the moment. Once I get my weaponry more leveled up, then I'll definitely be farming these on the regular. But let's get the treasure. Oh, we got some syringe. We've got some of the flares for the depot or the airdrop I should say so I can get better equipment and we'll go on and I'm literally I ran home after that I just banked I was banking the goods because I was not meant to be in that area it is way too dangerous for me to stay there but as you can see I got the three star shotgun which is basically the sort of level of weaponry you need to do those levels consistently but we'll leave it there. I'm just putting stuff away right now, being all OCD about it. As you can see, everything's nicely done. But as always, I hope you did enjoy. I thank you for watching. And always remember how awesome you are. Bye! Days of light when the world is getting darker. I have a dream where love's the only side. So take my hand. Join the army of the shadow